Well, between this and Painter, it looks like I've got kind of an art theme going on this week. This is a game called Your Doodles Are Bugged, which, you know, as an aside, is probably one of the worst titles I've ever heard for a video game ever, but I guess it is apt because you are doodling and there are bugs. Uh, the object of your game is to use those doodles to get these bugs to that honeypot in the center. Uh, it won't always be in the center, but it, it will always be surrounded by you know, those crazy looking yellow submarine movie-esque obstacles that look like they came out of Ringo Starr's Fever Dream. The reason I'm showcasing this game is, uh, it's actually, I don't want to say it's old, but it came out last year on Xbox Live Indie Games platform, uh, last summer I believe. And it's just been released for Steam now, so obviously there's some more more attention being paid to it now that is on uh, kind of a more popular distribution platform. Uh, caveat emptor, if you have an Xbox and you're interested in this game after you watch this video, I would probably pick it up on that because on Xbox Live Indie Games, I believe it's running uh, for 80 points right now, which is only a dollar, whereas it's going for $10 on Steam. $10 or uh, 7 euros. Uh, that being said, I, for me, this game is not worth... Ten dollars. It's not worth a full price purchase, but definitely for a dollar, I'd uh, I'd check it out. It's one of those few games on the Xbox Live Indie platform that is actually worth even a dollar. I'm sad to say. Um, so yeah, the main thing that you're doing in this game is just drawing these ramps so that the bugs can take the path up. The reason that I don't like it as much as um, well, the game is most reminiscent of is something like Lemmings. The reason I don't like it as much as something like Lemmings is that the AI on the bugs does not seem very good. They kind of just like sometimes they won't do what you need them to do, which is kind of important in a game like this. Uh, it's kind of similar to World of Goo, how after you get your uh, all your pieces in order, you can hit the fast forward button and kind of take everything to its natural conclusion. Um, but sometimes that can take a few minutes of just watching these bugs like go back and forth randomly. Like you can see, I've, there's enough space on the, the very, very bottom here that those bugs can fit through and then jump up to get into my ramp system, but they just kind of choose not to and just wander back and forth over and over. And part of that is uh, my lack of skill in the game. You can draw ramps that make it more easy for them to get out or easier for them to escape and actually get onto these ramps. But still, I kind of feel like the AI is, is not where it needs to be to make this a really engaging puzzler. Uh, I feel like I, I enjoy the time I spend with it, but I'm also frustrated a lot of the time. I'm like, just get the fuck in there. I, I built this perfect system for you, uh, but you can't handle it. So yes, I've uh, I've gotten my 20 bugs that I need to get. Again, it's like World of Goo in the sense that you have to get a certain number to the exit, or you know, it's like Lemmings in that sense as well. But let's get them all. Let's be a little bit of a completist. And of course, I'll, I'll change my name. I'm gonna upload it to the leaderboards. I might as well make sure it's something memorable. Remember when arcade games only let you have uh, three letters when you put up a high score? It always pissed me off since my name was Ryan, so I was like, what do I do? Do I go Raya, Rin, Ran? Obviously not, that's, that's bad. And uh, having two middle names, I got four initials, so I can't even give myself my full initials. Anyway, there's this kind of story that goes on throughout the game as well about this guy named Doodalus. I didn't really pay too much attention to it because it seems just like it's kind of... I mean, there's narrative, but it doesn't have an impact on the gameplay whatsoever, so... It kind of just seems like an add-on to me. Voice acting is really funny, though. Some of those... Some of those uh, actions are, or some of those scenes are pretty funny. Uh, they introduce this new gimmick here that uh, you only have a certain amount of ink in your pen and if you uh, if you use too much you're not screwed but you do have to go erase uh, some of your drawings to refill ink. So what I'm going to try to do here is use as little as possible to create kind of a bridge that they can use to walk into this honeypot. And you see I don't have too too much left but I should be able to make a ramp that at least goes down uh, dips down deep enough into this pool to pick up enough bugs. And actually, you can see that something that's kind of cool is that the uh, the bugs turn blue if you draw on them by accident, so you can see there's one blue bug that's making its way toward the end right now. And, oh, ooh, uh, we've got a serious problem here. <laughs> I, I didn't foresee that they could, uh, they would actually jump off there. By the time I put this wall up, I think, mm, there might not be enough left for me to actually get in there. Uh, no, I think I'm going to fall it a little bit short, but we'll carry it out and see what happens. Um, those ones at the bottom, they're not dead. I mean, there are some levels where they die when they touch the ground, but um, I, I just don't have enough ink to uh, like build a ramp from the bottom up to the honeypot and save them, so we're just going to restart here. Uh, the game does a pretty good job of making it easy for you to restart. The loading times between the puzzles are not very long. So we'll just try to be a little bit more careful this time, and I'll set up some sort of wall to catch them so they can't fall over the side. Again, that's something partly my fault, partly the AI's fault. Uh, 
they probably should not just jump to their deaths, but I guess, you know, um, it's user error. Problem between monitor and keyboard. Um, I can understand, again, uh, it's an indie game. It's developed by a guy named Johannes Hubert, or Johannes Hubert, I guess. Um, and I can understand the problems in trying to make a game like this where you have so many factors on the screen at once that all need to have uh, you know, relatively intelligent AI considering what you're trying to get them to do. And, you know, I, I'm sympathetic to that, but it does fall short a little bit. Again, I think this game's okay. I don't think it's worth $10. It's definitely worth the $1 you would pay on Xbox Live Indie Games. Uh, if, if just to support the developer and the, the platform in general. Again, uh, I've got a problem here where I can't seem to get all of those guys out. They just keep moving under the ramp. But anyway. Um, yeah, there's a demo on Steam, so, you know, feel free to play it and disagree with me if you, uh, if you feel that this game actually is worth $10. I'm sure a lot of you could get, could get your money's worth, but, um, for me, I'd rather just play a little bit of Old Lemmings or, you know, even some, uh, even some Line Rider. Or if I had a DS, I'd probably, uh, maybe compare this more to something like Scribble Moss. But anyway, this is going to be the end of the video preview. Thank you guys for watching. Your doodles are bugged. See you next time.